super important. I cannot stress this enough. This project is synced with the grid. So you got to make sure you're recording to the grid that's in Cubase and it's aligned properly. Otherwise, your quantize isn't going to match up at all. It's got to be on. Hey everybody, I'm Josh with Great Interstellar Studios and today we're going to be doing a tutorial on drum editing in Cubase 8. Um, it's kind of hard to find good information out there. There's a lot of misinformation or um, just incomplete information. Um, so my aim is to hopefully um, educate you guys in a practical way on how to um, approach this kind of stuff. Um, so today we'll be covering drum editing. So this is my uh, first kind of uh, tutorial type video. Um, so if you guys are really into the covers and uh, recording videos or live music, um, this isn't going to be the same kind of thing. So um, it's going to be a lot slower paced and it might bore some of y'all. So um, it's not going to hurt my feelings if you guys don't um, watch this video if you're not really into what I'm going to be talking about. <clears throat> but hopefully this will appeal to the people out there that want to learn this stuff and uh, can get some use out of this. So I'm going to make this uh, first little video here um, kind of short, or at least as short as possible, um, and try to just um, open it up wide up here for you guys. <clears throat> okay, so in my project here, uh, I've got one open, and I've got my uh, left and right locators uh, selected right here uh, for the area that we're going to be working on. So um, I've recorded the drums already, and this is pretty much as they as they were recorded. I uh, haven't touched them, um, all except for this other section over here that I've already done. This is my second attempt at a uh, uh, this is my second attempt at a uh, drum editing video, but the first attempt my screen capture software didn't work right. So I'm going to be attempting it a second time here over here on the project. So um, this is exactly as it was recorded. I'm going to open up Lame View here and you can see that uh, we've got four takes here and then we did some punch-ins down here. <clears throat> so uh, for the purposes of this I'm going to show you guys how to, uh, well we have to comp it first before we can edit it. Um, we have to uh, get this stuff consolidated down to one, one straight channel. That'll make it the easiest on us. Um, so that's generally what I like to do first. I'll record all the drums um, and in this case, I've got a, I've got, I think, 15 mics, a kick, a snare, three snares, um, top and a bottom, and then the body mic is an SM7 above the drummer pointed down at the snare. Five toms on this kit, um, a hi hat and a ride, stereo pair of overheads, stereo pair of rooms. <clears throat> okay, so um, after you've recorded it, um, so the next step is to. Uh, choose what takes you want. So, I mean, you're hopefully uh, you're recording in multi-track mode. Uh, you're recording all these at once. Um, I find it helpful to put everything in a folder um, and enable uh, group editing. <clears throat> uh, that just makes it to where uh, if you do one thing, if you make a cut on one of the channels, um, it'll make a cut all the way down every uh, channel in this folder. <clears throat> okay. So um, you're recording over each channel. Um, so every time you do a recording over another recording, um, it'll put it in a new lane, um, if you didn't know what lane lanes are. Um, and so, of course, if you have it in group editing mode, um, it'll help <laughs> really not... Uh, it'll help to really let this stuff not get uh, confusing later on because it can be pretty confusing, especially if you've got everything open um, all the time and you're trying to navigate through all this stuff. <clears throat> okay, so the way that uh, this group editing thing works is it will select everything as a group and it'll make functions happen to every channel in the group. Um, but the key thing is that they have to start and they have to stop at the same time. If you've got um, a cut in one of these, let me show you. <clears throat> you got a cut, like saying your snare bottom right there, um, and then you turn the group editing on. It's going to tell you the tracks in this folder are not completely in sync. Group editing could fail. 
Um, so that just means that, hey, this dude's not in sync. Um, so whenever you try to select it, it won't select it. Um, another really important thing, let me just undo that real quick. Um, another really important thing is uh, key commands. You want to make sure that you know your key commands and you're able to navigate quickly. That'll save you um, all kinds of time. I'll probably do um, a video on key commands um, all by themselves um, if this stuff takes off and if <laughs> you guys like this kind of stuff. Um, so uh, the basic ones are, um, if you don't know them already, um, if you hold control on holding the scroll wheel, you'll zoom in and out. You hold shift, scroll right to left. Um, I have a couple key commands set, nothing too fancy. Um, the tilde key, which is the little, um, it's to the left of the one. Um, that key for me um, opens up the edit channel settings on whatever channel. I just find that really useful for the way I work. If I need to get in there real quick, um, I hate having to click and then go up to the channel edit button. Um, it's just a waste of time. All right, so anyway, let's get into this. So we're going to listen to our drums. And um, let's open up lane editing here. Uh, let me zoom in to our selection. Okay, so for the purposes of this, um, these takes down here, we did them a little bit differently. Um, so there's two different ways to play this part. Um, so it just depends on what the band wants. For this, we're just going to use this uh, for the first way that we did it. Um, and then we've got this punch in over here. So um, that'll make it nice and simple. I'll show you how to select one punch in. Um, so, also, as far as key commands go, the number keys uh, correspond to your toolbar. Um, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, so, eight is our comp tool. So, <clears throat> if you're not familiar with using the comp tool, I'll show you how. Um, so, when you're in the comp tool, um, what you need to know is that if you hold Alt, it'll bring up scissors. Um, now, the difference between using the Alt uh, scissors in the comp tool and say tool three, the actual scissors, is that if you cut with the scissors tool on a lane, it'll only make the one cut on the lane. Um, I think if you cut the top, the master track, it'll make a cut all the way down the lane. Um, and since my group editing's on, it does that as well. But if you don't make the cut on the master track, then it's not going to do that. So you can get yourself into trouble. Um, if you've got any of these lanes open. So that's pretty important. <clears throat> so the scissors in the comp tool, um, you have to hold Alt, will just make a cut all the way down. Um, no mess. So that's preferable uh, for me, anyway. Okay, so let's listen to our transition here. So here's our drums. We'll go ahead and just do the first two rolls. Um, that gives us some interesting stuff to play with. Okay, so let's just, um, in order to make this quick and simple, um, that that second roll sounded kind of kind of crazy. There's definitely going to be a little bit heavier editing if we choose that roll to go with. Um, so let's just get this transition first. So um, I hear a snare being hit and being cut off suddenly. That's not great. Um, so we definitely don't want that. Um, so let's probably, so we're going to start off by making a cut um, to make sure they're all cut in the proper places. Um, so this whole 
bit sounds scrambly to me, so let me just see where it comes in. It sounds like it might get a little clearer. Uh, clearer? Um, right there. Yeah, I'd be willing to bet that, that probably is fine. Mm, I don't like how he hits that cymbal right there, though. That kind of is supposed to be like a pod. So let's see. Um. He's on the ride in this version. That's interesting, um, but that's pretty straightforward. I, I do like the way that sounds. Okay, so for our purposes here, um, we will choose a different take right here. Okay, so I've got snap on, um, so you know it'll try to snap to the grid here. If you hold the control button down, you can drag it wherever you want. Um, since my uh, group editing is on, again, I don't have to worry about dragging anything. It'll do it across my channels. Okay, so I think that's oh, that's the same take. No wonder. <laughs> okay, let's choose this one here and see what that sounds like. <coughs> Yeah, that sounded pretty cool. Let's go ahead and pull it out a little bit more um, so we can get a kind of a better bird's eye view. Nice. So when I was listening to that, I don't look at where the, the cut is. Um, I'm trying to just focus on what I'm hearing. Because um, if you're seeing it, um, you can fool yourself. Uh, the eyes and the ears are pretty different, so... Um, I looked down at my keyboard in front of me while I was listening to that, and uh, it sounded pretty good to me. Okay, so let's go ahead, and um, we've got our, our transition here. Oh, although, this is a completely different thing that we're not using. So we wanted to use this take um, going in. So let's not do that. Let's not switch takes completely. So let's come back up here. So I like the way that that went. Yeah, he's just, the difference is he's just adding that snare in on that beat there. Um, so that's going to make that um, sound better. <clears throat> okay. So we're going to make our cut on measure 155 right there. And then we're going to select our comp. Okay. Hmm. Ooh, I don't know. That's weird. I mean, it's definitely because there's a snare right here. But I'm kind of wondering now where the snare is. Hmm. Changes the whole feeling of it. Um, the snare being right in the, on this beat instead of this beat here. So let's go ahead and just take a look. Okay, that sounds pretty okay, but it's still got that crash just by itself. Um, what if we married both of them? We're gonna have two snare hits in a row. Let's see. What that yeah, that gets a little messy. <laughs> yeah, it looks, sounds like uh, we're capturing something in these um, overheads. There we go. I still don't like the way that sounds. I don't like two consecutive snare hits like that. Um, man, I wish he would have. I don't know if there is a take where he does it. Hmm, I guess we'll just have to choose one.
I guess the worst the, or the least offending one is the the crash by itself. Um, even though, in this context, I'm not crazy about it, but um, it'll sound fine. Um, so we'll go we'll go ahead and go with that. Okay, so this roll was pretty cool, I think. Um, I'll accept that he's going crazy on that hi-hat pedal. Oh, no, no, no. He's just hitting the hi-hat a couple times at the beginning. That's cool. I dig that. Uh, second roll. I know that's wonky. Ooh, no. I still like that. That's pretty dope. Sounds like it's um, definitely going to need a little bit more heavy editing because um, he's definitely swinging that a bit. Um, but we'll go ahead and use it. And I guess we'll just, that, that'll that be an example of um, how to drum at it, right? That's what we're here for. Um, okay. So where are we going to stop our. I'm going to stop it on this snare right here. <clears throat> so let's make my cut right there. Um, and that'll be a good consolidation spot. Let's see where it's going to put that. It's going to move that back a little bit, but this gives us a little bit of room because as we edit this next section, this is going to be moved up a little bit. Um, so that's cool. That makes for a good section there. Um, so let's make a cut at the beginning of our passage and then we'll consolidate. Cool. We'll start. Nice, easy, close hi-hat pedal. <clears throat> All right. So uh, let's do this. Cool. And this is slider right here. If you uh, drag that, it'll make your waveforms bigger or smaller. Um, I learned that a little late, but when I found it, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Very helpful. Okay, so we've got our cut here. Okay, so the next thing, let's go and close um, lanes here. So uh, in this section, what we're gonna do um, to consolidate is normally what I will I will do is uh, I will save. Um, let's consider this since this is my second attempt doing this. <clears throat> it's a little bit different than normal. Because uh, normally, once I select all my drums, I would save it um, to a different file name called whatever the project name is, um, drum source. Um, so I had I had originally done the drums myself for this song, so I had one original drum source already, and then the drummer uh, they got a new drummer, so he came in and recorded it. Um, so that became drum source two. I've already saved that out. And now uh, we're in this project drum edit tutorial. Um, so what I'm going to do, I've already got drum source saved. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and just save this as number two. So that way I can always go back if for some reason I didn't like this, which it really doesn't matter. I could save it as the same thing. But just for the purposes of showing you guys, that's normally my system. Um, and so that way I'm not going to ever back myself into a corner. If uh, I send this off to the band and then they say, well, I don't like this one part, I can still go back and take a look at all the takes and have all the original recordings uh, nice and raw. Um, okay. So after you do that, I've got this saved as a key command, um, but I'll show you. So in uh, audio, you know, bounce selection, I have this saved as control B. You can save it to a key command if you want. Um, for me, it's really convenient because I use this a lot. So Control-B will bounce everything. You hit Replace, well, everything that you've selected, and it'll make it its own thing. So we'll check our lanes here. See how it just made it all the same. So that's cool. Oh. <clears throat> We're ready to begin drum editing. Um, so this camera is about to die, so I might have to lose this angle. Um, but I'm going to keep on going with the video. Um, okay, so we're ready to start drum editing. So for this, we need to turn group editing off. Uh, so Cubase has a nice little thing. Let's double click this uh, event here, and it'll bring us into our sample editor. Uh, so we're in this hit points tab. Um, this is what we're going to be using. 
So we can draw our threshold slider, and we can select where it's going to put our hit points in. It's just like gonna, it's detecting the transients. Um, so we'll just select it to where, you know, it's going to hit all of our kick drums, but we don't want to get any of the other stuff. Um, so in the kick drum mic, obviously, uh, you can tell the kick drum is the biggest thing. Um, so we'll just drag this down on all of our kick drums. Pretty close. I think that's a kick drum. Nope. Cool. Um, but you always want to go back in and check it. So for drum editing, what we're doing here is we're setting up hit points to um, tell our quantize panel where to make cuts. Um, so it's really not too critical that they be as you know exactly on the transient to the T. You know, if they're a little off, that's fine. Um, because we're setting it up to where it's going to detect it right here. It's going to say, oh, hey, we're going to make a cut right here. Um, and actually, you set it a little bit back. You can, um, there's a parameter in there you can set to how far or close to this line um, you have. There's an offset. Um, so I have it offset to where it's going to cut a couple milliseconds in front. I think like 20 milliseconds in front, actually. It's, it's, it's a little bit. Um, so you don't have to be exact. Um, but you do need to make sure that there is a hit point on each of your um, hits and that you're not capturing other stuff. So we just go through this. This is the real glamorous part. This is the fun part. This is the part where, uh, you know, <laughs> when I'm on my way home, I just I'm, I can't wait to get into these these hit points. No, actually, this is like when I'm listening to podcasts and stuff, I'll just sit here and hit point drums. And I'll just sound out, man. So um, I can pretty much scan all this stuff and see that that's good. Um, okay, so we're done with our kick. Let's do our snare. All right, so again, we're going to uh, move the threshold. Um, to where we can get all of our snare hits, but nothing else. <coughs> okay. Let's see what we get. Ooh, all those flams. All right. So I do something a little bit different with flams. What's going on over here? This is Tom's. Okay. And those are all toms too. So that's our whole event there. So here we go. Uh, so for these flams, um, it's putting in a hit point for each of the hits, but uh, I usually don't do that. Um, I'll usually, let's go ahead and just take them away. Um, okay, so when you're in the sample editor, let me just run you through the controls here. Um, so it works like just like the arranger window. Um, if you hold Alt, that's how you insert hit points. And if you hold shift, that's how you disable hit points. You can drag a marquee, select them all, and it'll just take them away. So that's what I just did then. Gone. Okay. So I usually put in a hit point in between our flams because I just want it to treat that hit as one. Because if it tries to detect both of them, it's going to make our cuts way too close together. And um, <laughs> together. And uh, then uh, it'll just be... A mess. It'll be more prone to mess up, and we don't want that. Okay. So you can pretty much see um, here. It looks like another flam. Yep, I don't like that. So I just took the one. Okay, so if there's a hit point, you can drag it and move it. I forgot to mention that. All right. Going through, we're just checking the snares. Checking the snares. All good so far. What's this? Is that a snare or a tom? I think it's a. I think it's a tom. Uh, sometimes you got to get out and take a look here. Oh, no, it's three, three snares. See? There we go. We're checking. It's just hitting this one real light. Okay. What's happening over here? 
Okay, and then there's one right here. Um, also, another thing, let me go just disable that. If uh, This is where it's going to, if you were to put the threshold all the way down, it would add, you know, uh, hit points to all the stuff right here. Um, so if you've got your alt down, um, you can tell whenever you go, when you line up with one of those, you can lock that in right there. So that's a little helpful for placing them maybe a little bit quicker. Okay, so that's our snare track. Um, let's do our toms. So I just do the kick, I just do the snare top. There's no reason to do um, three different snare tracks. Um, yeah, you'll just be creating a headache. Okay, so our toms, let's go ahead and zoom out here, because I think the only part of our selection the toms are even in, let me move this down here. I think there's a tom fill right there. Looks like there's a toms right there, tom right there. Um, so let's take a look here. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. This is uh, just something that I'm going to do real quick. Just to show you guys how. So I'm doing toms. Oh, I almost hit my Windows button. <laughs> Don't you hate when that happens? All right, so I always cut my toms. I'm just going to cut the silence out of the toms. Um, so whenever the toms aren't being played, you're just going to pick up bleed um, in those mics. So I pretty much, I cut my toms real tight. Um, so I really don't want to hear any of that cymbal and that kick crash coming in. Um, so I will typically cut them all the way to there. And we'll need to look, bring that up to make sure we're not getting the part of something else, which it looks like we are right here. So that's a little a little much. I don't want that. I did that a slow way. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I'm just going to cut them right there. Um, okay, so generally I usually don't overlap them like that. Normally I'll just make my cuts. So let's do this real quick. For the purpose of the consolidations, I always like to uh, just fade them out. Sometimes with this low frequency, like the floor toms and stuff, you'll get, um, it's prone to pop and click if the fades aren't good enough. It might even pop right there just because I'm cutting it off on this low, low tom right here. Um, if that's the case, I'll just fade it out at that click. Um, but uh, for the purposes of this, I'll just do that and I'll fix it later if it happens um, if not that's fine then we've won okay so this is my events or my waveform is real big okay so we got a cut right there too <clears throat> cool let's select all of our toms here there and then we have another fill right here but I won't get too exact I can always trim them more so I'm gonna keep the snares in there I'm gonna cut it right before the crashes and the kicks that's just what I do all right and then for our selection I'm just gonna mute all these all the silence in between. Okay. And then I'm going to reselect everything. So um, since I've already hit point in the kick and the snare, I've already got hit points on them. So I don't want to, uh, what do you call it? I don't want to rebounce those. Um, I know that these are all the same. So I just want to rebounce the toms. Uh, I don't even need the snare body. It's really, if I just selected that. I'm just going to marquee select that stuff, and I'm going to rebounce it. Again, I can hit Control-B to do it real quick. But boom, that's going to replace it. And now where we've cut out all the silence, now we've got all of our... Mm -hmm. 
man, you can see just how much there is. And uh, uh, clearly, he's not hitting these toms, so I'm, I, I uh, silenced those out as well. Um, I just didn't do that here. But that's how I normally approach that. Um, I would silence this out. Um, I don't even think he's hitting tom one. Nope, he's just hitting these three toms here. So I'd silence that guy out, and I'd silence tom five out. <clears throat> But that's generally how I would do it. Cool. And, um, all right. So, again, we'll uh, resume. Let's hit point our toms. So I use this, uh, this guy up here. I can see where my toms are. If, even if I had the whole thing, you could see the whole event. And um, you could see where each of your high points are. So you could... Use that to navigate as you zoom into your selection. That little gray um, shows you where you're selected. Okay, so anyway, so what's this? That's just two of the top tom there. Oh, this is tom one. Um, so there is no top tom there. So actually, let's just remove that. Um, yeah, you can tell there's no transient information. We almost got fooled by this little dude there. Um, okay, so... Sounds like dun dun dun. This might not be the same tom. Yeah, it is. So four hits there on that top tom there. And then what do we got here? Same thing. What are they for? Dun dun dun. Just make sure we have it all on there. Tom one done. Let's do tom two. So we definitely have tom two right here, right there, and right there. So it's going to be three spots. Um... So zoom in here. Just two hits, nice and easy. Go, oh, here we go. Here's a bunch. So there's five hits. Da 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 bum. Da 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 da. There you go, boom. Just like that. Easy. Okay, and then the last fill. I learned. Tom hits, so it's looking like there's only these two Toms. Let's check the second. That's it. All right. Let's do Tom three. Um, same thing. We've got uh, only the two. So it looks like we've only got this one. And since we're doing so much, I'm leaving the threshold down. Um, it's it's pretty quick just to marquee select all the um, uh, hit points you want to disable. Okay. That was cool. Let's go to this other guy right here. So you can just hit all of those in one so there's two right there nice and easy and then oh there might not be one right here yeah it looks like there's probably not nope so nothing right there so we're done with that tom okay and we've only got one hit on tom four right here so let's uh disable everything and we'll just zoom in real quick and put our one hit in there boom nice and easy Okay. All right. Now, um, I generally don't hit point high hat or ride, but you can if you want to get more in there um, for speed. I just don't find it's really necessary a lot of the times. If I find an offending high hat or an offending ride that's kind of off the grid, just wild, um, I'll just treat that. I'll just get in there and make a manual cut and just edit that myself. Um, but for doing huge, you know, the whole song <laughs> or blocks of the songs. Um, yeah, I just don't really mess with the hi-hat or the ride hit points. I just do kick, snare, and toms. Just close mics. So let's start cutting. And my battery in that camera still hasn't died. <laughs> That's remarkable. All right, so this is where it gets pretty exciting. So we're going to put our group editing back on. And then up here, this is going to be our quantize panel. You're going to click that button right there. And it's going to open up this, this bad boy here. And you can see it did all kinds of crazy stuff. This is just showing us where cuts are going to be made. Now it's got our selections already here. We don't want those selections. So this is where we assign priority to which uh, hit points are going to take precedence if two of the hit points are in uh, a really close uh, range of another. So that way, um, if you've got a kick and a snare being hit at the same time and each of those are hit pointed, well, which one is it going to choose? Um, I always choose the snare as top priority because 
Um, as far as kick goes, um, when you're micing the kick from the inside, you have a lot of isolation. You can actually get away with moving the kick drum mic by itself a little bit um, without knocking everything else out in phase. You can't do that with the snare, especially a snare that's got three different mics on it. If you move one of those mics a little bit, you're just going to ruin the phase relationship and you're going to cause um, all kinds of problems for yourself. So always snare top priority. Um, kick is always next priority. Boom, it just added a bunch of cuts. Um, and then all the toms, I usually give those just three stars. Because generally they don't hit more than one tom at the same time. So then once you've got all your selections made, so that all where it's going to, uh, has a red line is where it's going to make its cuts. And then the white line is just, it's going to cut it all the way through. Um, so again, you have to have the group editing on. Um, then you hit the quantize panel right up here. Then you select all your priority. And then, um, oh, super important. I cannot stress this enough. This project is synced with the grid. So you got to make sure you're recording to the grid that's in Cubase and it's aligned properly. Otherwise, your quantize isn't going to match up at all. It's got to be on. So uh, I have my drummers, or all my musicians, record to the click that's in Cubase. Uh, so I just use that and I always set up my grid. So you do that, you do that first. You make sure that grid's set up. Otherwise, this isn't going to work. You're not going to be able to do this at all. Uh, you're just going to have to do this manual way, um, which can be a pain. Another thing is this catch range. Um, you know, you might be concerned with, well, Josh, I don't want to grid my drums completely 100% and make my drummer sound like a robot. Um, so, uh, again, I'll, I'll say, too, that um, along with the Hyatt and the Ride, a lot of the times I won't do toms um, because the tom fill is going to be this original creative thing. And um, for me, I think the way that drummers will play their toms in their fills, um, you know, kind of gives their personality to the fills. So... Most of the time, I leave fills alone um, unless I just feel like it needs to be edited again. I'll, I'll Sometimes I'll just get surgical, and I'll just pick and choose which ones I'm going to get in there and maybe move just one hit if I have to. Um, but for the most part, I do like to leave them alone. Uh, for this, I'm just showing you uh, the toms because these are just really easy fills, um, and it ain't nothing to it. But you ask, how do you humanize it? If you do want to humanize it, you've got this catch range. You can set a percentage where if your drummer hits close enough, like say within 90% of the grid, um, it won't move those. So you can select your own percentage. Feel free to experiment with that and um, humanize to your heart's content. Um, so now that we're ready, we're going to hit our slice. My grid's set up already. We're going to make our cuts. Boom, it's going to cut it all the way down. Um, we're going to let it go ahead and quantize it. Boom, it should be quantized in. And then we're going to hit crossfade. Um, sometimes um, if you're... If you're like listening to it at the same time, sometimes this crossfade won't show up. Sometimes you just have to move the cursor to get this thing to like refresh and get this other tool to uh, come up. Um, that's just been a problem for me sometimes. Uh, so that kind of confused me. Okay, so these crossfades, uh, they're one millisecond right now. That's, that's pretty short. That's pretty dang short. <clears throat> so um, I'd actually like it to be... A little bit longer than that. Yeah, let's do like three. Whoop, not 23. Let's do uh, three milliseconds. There we go. So like for the kick and the snare, uh, well, kick actually needs a little bit more. Uh, but if, if they overlap, if there's low frequency inter, uh, information there, uh, it's more prone to popping with shorter lengths. So for like toms, you might want to open up the length of the crossfades to maybe uh, five milliseconds. Um, and you'll see that as we edit, it, it may uh, show us what it's going to want to do. Um, equal power for drums. So let's go ahead and close that out. Okay, so we've crossfaded it. All right, so it's quantized. So then um, that's all good and fine. It seems to have done this for us. Um, that's pretty neat, but I don't trust it. You should never trust this stuff. Because if you don't listen to it, you'll you'll find out. So we're gonna listen to it, um, and we'll see. It may we may luck out. The the first video I did of this, um, it pretty much did it all the way through. My drum, the drummer that recorded this was pretty tight, pretty close to the click. Um, so I'm thinking in this example, maybe the toms might mess up those fills, that second fill, because he swung it a little bit. That one might not place properly. Um, but I, I think for the most part, this is probably gonna sound pretty okay right off the bat. Um, some of uh, these recordings, you don't get that lucky. You'll you'll get through, and like every, you know, ten 
10 cuts is you'll have to adjust something. But that's just how it goes. Um, that's why it's key to get it right in the tracking. Make sure that uh, you're getting the best takes you can so you don't have to rely on this kind of stuff. All right, let's go ahead and listen to it and see. Okay, so I heard some stuff. Okay, um, so there was an example of when we didn't hit point the uh, hi-hat. This one is very off. So again, like I said, we'll just come in and we'll do a manual cut, and then I'll just move this over. So um, I'm going to use nudging on this. So um, you have a couple different ways you can do this. I, for the longest time, I just dragged the actual vent over like that. Um, but then you're just left with this space here. So I don't like that. I started using the nudge. So if you hold the control and the alt keys at the same time, you'll come up with this little icon here. And then when you drag, it'll drag within the event. So that's pretty dang cool. Uh, when you do that, you'll drag this over too. So you just have to watch that other side. So then you come over to the other side and then just drag your crossfade over like that. And... Um, Mm. So this seems to be a hit. So we're going to check this out. That might be something. Oh, that's going to be our flam. So that'll probably be okay. So let's check that out. Nice. Nice. So there we go. Now we still have a pop on this tom here. So let's... Now remember me talking about those fade links? So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to slide this crossfade over. Now... When you're doing this, you'll notice as you slide it over, in this one, in this case, we moved the other one up, so this ends up being behind the other one. But in some examples, the previous kick could come up. If your fade is over here, you can end up with a kick drum right there and your kick drum right there doubled up. They can flam together, um, create a bunch of dissonance. Um, you don't want that either. So what's going on right now is the tom is popping. So we don't want that to happen. So again, we'll just drag this over as close as we can. And then we'll just open up this fade link. We'll just, uh, it was set to three. So let's we'll double it up out to six. Six or seven, something like that. And boom, our, our pop is done. Now we played it a little close to that, so we may have got that pop from there. So let's go and listen to it a little bit out. Yeah. Um, now, for extra precaution, um, I'm going to go and select all of these that have these low toms in there. And I'm also going to increase the fade links. Just all across the board for all these toms. It just makes the tom smoother. That sounds a lot better to me. <laughs> cool. It's pretty tight. A lot of times those doubles like that, when you have kicks like that, they don't drummers don't play those tight a lot of the times. Um, but that's a testament to how close he played it. It put him in the right spot. So right here is an example of um, what happens when they don't place right. So again, right away, I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to go ahead and increase the fade links on these because I, I already know um, that they don't sound very clean. So I'm just going to do that preemptively. Now what's going on here is most likely, since we have a gap here, and I can see we've got some files underneath there. Let's go ahead and just drag this. I bet you it just tried to place these both right there. So let's, we're going to leave our snap on. Mm. Nope. Let's go ahead and drag it and see what our musician was wanting to do. Oh, right. uh, okay. 
Okay, so because the way he's playing this fill, uh, one, two, three, four, he's doing a triplet. He's doing one, two, three, one. Um, but it's, since it's gridded to one sixteenth, he's doing eighth note triplets. So they fall between that sixteenth straight grid. Um, so it tried to snap this triplet in that grid. So what I'm just going to do here is I don't want to make really any cuts. I know he played that pretty clean. So I'm just going to erase this and drag it out and just crossfade that. He plays it pretty close to the click. Um, he's a little bit ahead of the click. But I'm just let, gonna let that have its natural feel, feel right there, and it'll be fine. Boom! And see, and those uh, increased fade links worked for that too. So there you go. Uh, so this is the same thing because he does the same type of triplet there. Um, so I'll just delete this. I already know what the solution is. Delete that and I'll just drag it all out. Fade it right there. Listen. Cool. Okay, now I do hear a little bit of rattiness. Um, so again, increasing those fade links. Make that into a t-shirt. Increase those fade links, guys. That's <laughs> retarded. Ah, there we go. See? And then we're out of our zones. So we're not going to worry about this. Uh, we clearly hear there's uh, definitely something wrong. There's a gap, and uh, the next part's not coming in on time. But for this block that we've chosen to edit, we've done it. We've edited it all the way through. We've checked it. That is how you drum edit, guys. Um... So if this I was doing the whole thing, I'm going to go ahead and leave these just like this uh, because I have to get this whole thing drum edited. Um, so I've done these two sections. Um, I'm going to go through. I'm going to do the whole thing, and then I'm going to select everything and then bounce it on down, and then I will have <laughs> – my battery just died right then. Well, it almost made it, guys. <laughs> so – um, if you have any questions, um, just be sure to leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, if you liked it or if you hated it, hit that like button. <laughs> um, but I hope this was as fun for you guys as it was for me. Uh, if you guys like them, I'll keep it coming. I'm going to go ahead and leave it right here. You guys have an awesome one. Get out there and make some music. I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching. <laughs>